Happy Pentecost, everyone. Counselor. Come, Holy Spirit. Teacher of wisdom. Reminder of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Grantor of forgiveness. Giver of peace. Come, Holy Spirit. May we feel God breathing through our worship. May we receive the Holy Spirit in this place. Amen. 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 We're going to be singing Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'm Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's coming. Come, Holy Spirit. Check out what Let us hear it 
Notice that you did get um, in your seasonal gift bag uh, today something that will help you to participate in worship in a way that you might not necessarily have done before. These are now Holy Spirit sticks because I said they were okay. <laughs> Everything is holy, but these are going to help us to worship more fully today. So as you're moved by the Spirit. I invite you to use these, however it is that will help me to worship today. Hear now the truth about the Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came the sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire rested on each other. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them a soul. Now the word about Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native tongue? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I said. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young ones shall see visions and your old ones shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. 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 Okay. Hi, everybody. Hello. This is my favorite part of service aside of worship and pastor's preaching and fellowship and gathering and time together <laughs> and just being here. Outside of all of that, my favorite part for big kids and little kids, all of all ages, because I'm a big kid at heart, amen? Amen. 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 Miss Terry, you did not have to be so loud with the amen. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's time for Children's Church. And so today is a special day in the church. It is Pentecost, right? Yeah. All right. So I have a question for you. Turn the pan off right now. We all have one of these, I hope. If not, it's going to get hot, so I invite you to go get one. These are great, especially on a hot summer day, right? But I have a question. Can you see the air coming out of this? No. No, you can't see the air, right? I'm jacking this all up. You can't see the air, right? No. Well, but we can see the pretty ribbon that I put here, right? Yeah. Right? And if it wasn't, how would we know that it was on? Right? So besides seeing the ribbon, right? We can see the ribbon. We can hear it. Now, this isn't this isn't that old yet, but I have one in my window that you know is turned on because it rattles. You can hear it. And it does it all night long. It irritates Chris, but if it's not on, I can't sleep because I've gotten used to it. Um, the other way we know it's on is you can feel it. I can feel it. Now, I love a fan because it's windy out today, but if it was hot, this fan would be sat up right here next to the piano, just blowing right on me to keep me cool. Amen? Amen. Well, today's Pentecost, and as we just read together, uh, thanks to Pastor and Dean and everyone else who read together, we're going to tell the story from a different point of view. Amen? Amen. Okay, so it says in there that all of the disciples of Jesus gathered in one place. And it said the Holy Spirit showed up. And as my mom used to say, the Holy Spirit showed up and showed out. The Holy Spirit came and fell among all the people. And it, the Holy Spirit came with a purpose. It was to allow everyone to be able to share the great news of Jesus with everyone. That's what they wanted. That's what the Holy Spirit's goal was. But... How do we know the Holy Spirit was there? But they didn't see the Holy Spirit. Nowhere in Scripture does it say they saw the Holy Spirit. Well, there are a few ways we know that the Holy Spirit was there. The first thing is it said they heard a great wind. Much like we can hear the band. We can't see.
see the air coming out of the fan, but we can hear the fan. The second part, if you continue reading, it says, after they heard, it says they saw tongues of fire settle on their head. Well, we can't see the air, but we can see the pretty ribbon dangling, just like they could see the tongues of fire on their head. And if you continue reading, it says that the Spirit gave them utterance of all languages, tongue and origin. Well, when the Holy Spirit shows up in your life, it begins to change you. It begins to do something. You feel the power, just like they did in that room, much like we do if we were to put our face in front of this fan. We would feel the power of the fan. So, this Pentecost, I want you to, when you go home and everybody has a fan at home somewhere, I want you to think of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. That although you can't feel it, although you can't see it, you can feel it. And you can see the evidence thereof. Now, I have some good news. The Holy Spirit didn't just stop at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit is among us even still today, living in each of us, changing our lives, helping us to share the good news of Christ even today. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel the Holy Spirit in my life, and I thank God that he's changing me and molding me to be more like him and allowing me to share his love with everyone. Join me as we pray. Oh, Heavenly Creator, we thank you for the gift of your Spirit. We thank you for the evidence that we can see your Spirit working in our lives and in the lives of others around us. Allow us to continue to be molded and open to your Spirit in all areas of our lives, we pray. That today we don't just celebrate the giving of your gift, but we celebrate it every day of our lives. We touch and agree together and we say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Sabina, for sharing those insights for the young and the young. are probably used to 
sitting out here in 91 degree weather, right? Or the additional precautions that we have to make sure that we're aware of so that we can gather safely together, right? Yes. It's not the same. Not necessarily. But if it wasn't for those apostles willingness to be all together in one place and I wonder how else the Holy Spirit could have happened so powerfully among them and the hundred and some people that gathered around that place that day now we don't have a hundred and some but we do have some new folk who have gathered with us today and I want you to acknowledge them and give them an Amago Day welcome to coming together together. Thank you. And I'm not sure you have a bag yet, sir, but somebody is going to get you uh, a Holy Spirit bag. Those apostles didn't uh, experience a normal thing. When they got together, the thing that they had hoped for had been taken away from them. They, things didn't go the way they planned. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know why things didn't go the way that they planned? Because God had a better plan. Amen. Amen. God had a better plan for those people, the 12, the people who, yeah, and all the people who had been fed or um, he had taught or healed, right? all, the, all the people that had been touched in one way or another by Jesus, and all the people of the same faith that he had begun to be. And in fact, all of those now living or being present in the ancient Palestinian world now had a better plan. Yes. Because of God and God's willingness to send the Holy Spirit upon them. Yes, Jesus exited. But instead, what they got was something incredibly miraculous, marvelous, and powerful. Yes. God had a better plan. It has to do with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that is more than just all those dramatic things that we heard talked about in the message. Now you know it, I tend to be a little dramatic. But the Holy Spirit is more than just about some loud noise that's going on. Or some visible presence that looks like a father, or even the ability to speak somehow in a way that they have never spoken before. The Holy Spirit is even more than that. You see, this was just the beginning of their very positive experience. God had a better plan that had to do with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that gave those first disciples the ability to speak the truth, to see the world the way it could be, and ask why not. It gave them the ability to see the signs of the kingdom of Christ that was already among them, rather than the other things that they could have focused on. It's not just to call out the name of Jesus as the prophet Joel says, but to claim it. Claim that Jesus was the one that had given them this Holy Spirit and through it was going to save not only them, but anyone who would follow Jesus. Right? God had a better plan. A plan that included everybody even us. Did you hear that? Even us. Amen. God's plan 
and the Holy Spirit includes even us. Thank you. I'm glad we have gathered here today in this place and whether other places, however it is that you are located and participating in worship today for this Pentecost Sunday. But this gathering is more about more than the red bags that you see. The ones that are filled with symbols and invitations to understand more fully the Holy Spirit. It's more than about the images of doves that are present throughout this season for us. It's more than about singing songs and eating food together as a community. It's about more than even those things that are so the apostles did all of those same things too. Now we gather here to do the same. It's a reminder. God has a better plan for us. For us. The Holy Spirit is what God has in store to gift us with. Not just today, but every day. And to allow that Holy Spirit to work through us, just as it did those first apostles long ago. Today is a reminder that we too have been given the ability to speak the truth. Can we do it? We have been given the ability to envision our world the way it could be, yes. the way that Jesus described Amen. that it yes. could be. Yes, yes. 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 Do you see it? And it's about not only asking why not, but what we can do with the Holy Spirit to make it so. We are called to look for the signs of the kingdom of Christ around us right now. When you look to that, what did you see? I saw a bunch of holy people in a holy place for a holy purpose. That's what I saw. And I think that's what God sees too. As God is gazing upon us. Now. God has a better plan for each of us and all of us to participate in these things. Let's invite the Holy Spirit in with her wind, yes. her fire, yes. her ability to make, to give us, make us this a true Pentecostal day. Let us open ourselves to the better plan God has for us each of us and for a longer day and to every single person that we live with. We pray that we will see that we will hear that we will And I want to invite you now, as much noise and uh, vibrato as I just need, um, to understand that sometimes the Holy Spirit, Spirit speaks in a still, small voice and can be powerfully present among a group of people who are just quiet and listen to that. So let's just take one minute. Okay, minutes a long time. Let's take 35 and a half seconds to just sit and be still in the presence of the Holy Spirit.
Let us say amen. Amen. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Dean. Dean. I'm Dean. Um, uh, so um, I don't. I some of you know me, some of you don't, and I, you know, always have to like, you know, like I don't know where the level of knowledge is. So I'm just gonna start like uh, nobody knows me. Um, so um, I am the youngest of four children of George and Nina Beckett. Um, they they have both uh, passed on to to be with God. Um, my mom first, and my dad about seven, eight years ago. Um, but uh, when my mom passed away, um, I was devastated. I was totally devastated, as, as one usually is at the loss of a parent. Um, and I, uh, I remember um, at her funeral, I don't know how I managed to get up and speak, because like, I was just too nasty case, but I actually did. Um, and, um, one of the things I said, cause many people, when you go, when you have to go to a funeral, like there's a lot of people who come to a funeral who've never actually met the person who's deceased. They're there for you. You know, like they're there because, you know, they, they never met my mom, but they were, they were my friends or they were my coworkers. So they came to the funeral and I said something at the funeral that, um, I still believe to be true today. And that is that any goodness that you see in me, any, any goodness at all, any positive attribute that I might ever show in my life comes from my mom. Um, I have, I have three older siblings. Um, by, by the way, my, my older siblings were born about a year and a half apart and then six and a half years later. Me. Oops. Uh, but anyway, I, I always say you save the best for last. Um, but my oldest brother, who is nine years old, time, we are night and day. We are such incredibly different people. Um, and, um, when, uh, when we get together for like family, my, my oldest brother loves to tell stories and I don't believe about two thirds of them because I just don't like, like, it's like, were we raised by two totally different parents? Cause like, that's not the mom and dad that I know. But anyway, um, so I look at, I always look over at my other brother and he will either, he'll just, or he'll do this. Like, well, my oldest brother tells stories. So, so I'm like, you know, I know which ones to believe and which ones don't. But one of the things that I learned from my mom, my mom was the most incredibly generous person you'll never meet. You'll, you'll never meet. That's not well to take something. Um, but um, she was one of the most incredibly generous people ever. And the idea that um, you can give when you don't have anything, because we didn't have that much. We were, uh, we were, we weren't. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, it, my dad worked for the phone company and my mom stayed home and there were four kids, you know, so they didn't have a lot. There was no, there was no beach house. There was a vacation was a eight hour drive to New England to stay with my grandparents. For two years. <laughs> that was, uh, um, I love my grandparents, but two weeks when you're eight years old with 75 year old people, not always the most fun, but, but they, they, we were, they were just generous, generous people. And I, one of the stories that my brother told, which I actually had to look over the other brother, he was like, yeah, like, I didn't know this, but my mom and dad supplied Christmas for 10 other families in our little small town growing up. Like, they made sure that there were presents on the tree for other people. They made sure that there, there were presents on the tree for us. They made sure that there was a turkey for, for Christmas dinner. There was turkey for us. But I'm like, where did all this come from? And then I realized that my dad would wear a t-shirt until you could see through it. Um, and it had holes in it, like, everywhere. Um, but how can you be so generous when you got nothing? And then I realized that we all have something. We all have something that Amen. we can give. Whether it's our, our time, our, our energy, our, our good fortune. Um, if you are if you are blessed financially, you're blessed financially. If you're blessed with, with uh, an abundance of spirit, you have that to give. But we all have something that we can give, and to to have been the recipient of of their generosity uh, myself, 
and to know that there were people out there who I have never met and I will never know their names. And my brother didn't know their names either. He, he just knew like all these, these turkeys came into our house and then they just disappeared and they never sort of, they never hung out in our fridge. So like, I, it was just amazing to me. So, um, I hope that, uh, that I can be half the half as generous, a quarter as generous, a tenth as generous as my parents were. Um, I try. I don't know if I always am successful, um, but uh, I I have an example that I can uh, follow and live up to. And I hope that um, this little story can be an example uh, to you as well. But we all have the opportunity to be generous in some way, and I invite you. Uh, today to be generous with your spirit, with your with your resources, with whatever it is that you have that you can give to help those around you. I hope that you will. And if you like Nina and George, they were good people. Mm -hmm. I suppose I should pass a basket around. But Just set it. So we'll set it. it. We'll put it over here, and if anybody has anything, that's great. Amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
or try to, to prepare the celebration cups that you received so that we can all share in the sacrament. For those of you who are participating virtually, if you want to take just a moment now to find a piece of bread or a cracker and something to drink, wine, juice, even water. On the night before Jesus was to die, he gathered again with his friends, his family and his family of choice. And he celebrated a meal with them. On that night he took some very simple elements off of that table and he transformed them. He gave them a new meaning and it's that meaning that we keep here today. Let us remember. Uh, when the meal ended, Jesus took bread from the table and gave thanks for it and opened it and then passed it among them. He said, take this, all of you, eat it. This is my body, which will be given for you. And then Jesus took the cup, a cup that had been set aside, waiting waiting, waiting for a coming Messiah. It was on that night that Jesus cleaned that cup and again gave thanks. And then he passed it among them and said, take this all of you and drink it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new everlasting cup. It's given for you for all for forgiveness sake. Let us consecrate these elements that we bring together. For it is through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, that all glory and honor is yours, O Holy One, now and forever. We ask that you would bless and consecrate, transform these elements, just as you did those elements long ago. May they become for each of us as we need them to be, the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may we, by sharing in this holy meal, also be transformed this day into the same body. The meal's prepared, let's share the feast. opportunity to recognize a special blessing today for someone who has long been a part of our community of faith. 
these are the words of scripture that I chose for this occasion today. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray by idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, all of them, every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common Spirit something, isn't she? <laughs> Moves in mysterious ways. So at this time, um, I'd like to um, call forward Terry White. Thank you. Terry has been working very hard to identify her particular role in ministry. Come on back here. How long have you been working for this? Eight years. Eight years. She's um, started um, eight years ago to fulfill uh, requirements that were identified for her to receive certification in the LEAD program. Um, for laity empowered for active discipleship. Terry recently completed those requirements in her plan and now is going to be about giving voice and taking action according to the gifts that she has been given and the understandings that she has come to through this process. So today, it's my great privilege to present, on behalf of the LEAD program of uh, Metropolitan Community Churches, an acknowledgement that you have completed all the requirements for laity power for active discipleship um, in April of 2020. So I ask that those who are present today um, recognize this great accomplishment of Terry and give a hand clap of praise for you. Now, because we are a community of faith, we're going to pray for Sister tonight, okay. uh, for Terry. As uh, you are comfortable, wherever you are, um, if you want to sit, that's fine. If you want to come forward and surround Terry, that's fine too. Uh, laying on of hands is personal. Have you been through this vaccine? You can lay your hands on from six feet, okay? Let's pray. God, we thank you for this childhood. We thank you for the ways that you have guided her now, that you've gifted her, that you've informed her. That she might receive whatever it is that she needs and the guidance or the strength or the insight that she can truly be someone who is not only empowered herself, but has empowered others. We pray this, believing it will be so, because we ask it now in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
guide on this journey as well as my pastor and my, my church members, I would not have come. It was uh, a tough battle the last eight years. So I want you, if you have your instruments, I know they were given out before. I want you to do me a favor. I don't have a beat, but I can play to a beat. So I need you all to grab an instrument if you don't have one, because I want you to keep a beat for me. And I want you to worship God how you see fit. You might not know this song. It's okay if you don't. It's pretty quick and easy to pick on. You know we can't keep a beat. I, I've listened to half of you at Drum Circle. Don't lie. Are we ready? Yeah. Are you That's what I want. Heaven was 
having to hand out a page and everything else when we gather. So I want to hear from you all today. What are some ways this week that you are going to be empowered by the Holy Spirit? What are some ways that this week you're going to be empowered by the Holy Spirit? Drum circle on Tuesday. Okay. Ooh. What time is that? Five o'clock so at Rose is... Tree Park. All right. Two okay. four two. Two four two. What is it? Jim Days. Seven o'clock. Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. Where is it at? Where is it at? The Walmart Takeout. We haven't decided yet. What about Wednesday, Dexter? What about Wednesday? Wednesday. Do we still call it watch party? Five forty-five. We can rewatch this. Hopefully it won't be as hot, praise God. And I'm going to add Eli's picture to the watch party. <laughs> and then it will be an uh, opportunity for meditation at 6 p.m. here on Wednesday. And then Thursday, August, we have the Delco Foods Project, uh, both distribution and receiving of donations. All day. We need a little help this week. Yeah. All right. Anything else that you're going to do to be empowered by the Holy Spirit? Get ready for next Sunday. Get ready for next Sunday. And I think Mary has something. She wants to invite me. a little community project. It's called the um, We're Making boxes is a little bag of goodies and a utensil and the final cooler is a sandwich that you can help yourself to either turkey or ham. Okay? Thank so, you. And sanitizer. And sanitizer, yes. Thank you all. Happy Pentecost. Okay, um, Okay, can I get everyone to quiet down, please? Shh, please quiet. Can I get people? No, don't. Shh. 
Order in the court! Whoa, whoa, hey, Bull Shannon, this isn't night court. Just talk normal like one of the disciples. Okay, time out. Okay, hey, do you mind not interrupting my process, okay? Sometimes I like to free flow linguistically, okay? And what you're doing is, um, you're, well, you're, you're, cl you're clamping that. Oh. And, um, like a, I don't know, like a, like a clampy thing, you know, that clamp? Question? Yeah. Is this you right now free flowing linguistically? Because I want to make sure I'm aware of it and I see it when you do it. Is this your process? Because I want to, want to be there for you when you do that. Is this it? All right, it's been a few weeks since Jesus ascended, and this is a situation. Yeah, we've been reading some of your suggestions on what to call ourselves, and look, to be honest with you, some of them are worse than Bartholomew's beard. He's right. Bart, I love you, but your beard looks like Sasquatch got interrupted halfway through a face wax. Okay, uh, somebody suggested we call ourselves Jesus and friends, um, maybe it's just me. That sounds a little cultish. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Do you hear that? Yes, it sounds like there's an ice cream truck outside. Time out. It sounds like an ice cream truck, he says. I'll take idiotic statements for 200, Alex. The verse says they heard a sound from heaven. Can you name something more heavenly sounding than an ice cream truck? <laughs> you know what I like about you, buddy? You live every day like it's Shark Week, don't you? Would you just go with me? Look, would you just be the Tinkerbell to my Peter Pan? Hey, I am nobody's Tinkerbell, got me? Somebody's got Neverland baggage. Did you hear that? It sounds like a strong wind or an ice cream truck. All right, everyone, just, just relax, calm down. We're gonna go check this out. See? No ice cream truck. Hmm. Yep. Just the flaming tongues descending from heaven. <laughs> so, no ice cream truck. Sorry, Andrew, no dreamsicles today. Hey, is it just me? Or is everybody speaking in different languages? <laughs> right? Het is all het leiders van zal van Christus in here. Mars Ander and Tinderling. Mm. Oh, Dios mío. Por qué son la reclamado? Por qué me son la conquisto? Por qué me son la conquisto? Delphus, Tengake, Verconel, Camion de Elatos? Je suis tellement confus. It's been assez ververt. Und hongrek. Aber meistens ververt. Must have been confusing after the Spirit came down, but only until God's Word came through. You know, God spoke to everyone that day through His Spirit. Didn't matter what language they spoke or who was speaking. Isn't that a beautiful thing? God loves us so much that he goes to supernatural links to make sure we know his word. And that's what Pentecost is all about. It's also about learning how to speak with tongs. I find if you hold them lightly, more than... I knew we weren't saying the same thing. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh.